Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and before we get into our Raiders trade candidates, today's show is sponsored by RexMD. Head on over to RexMD.com slash chat if you're trying to, you know, get a little bit of rise out of your life. We're going to put those links for you all in the comments and in the description of today's video. So I wanted to do this show because there's been a lot of trade rumors circulating around the Raiders after Josh McDaniels, Dave Ziegler had some comments in terms of, we want to get our own guys. We know NFL teams are keeping tabs on certain players. And, well, after the Raiders did not trade away Derek Carr, I figured it was a good time to make a new video. So all the players that you are going to see here on today's show, I ranked them from five down to one. And it's the top five players that are the most likely to be traded before NFL free agency starts, which is March 15th at 4 p.m. Eastern time. After that, guess what? You're going to get another video and you'll probably get another trade video. So if you enjoy trade videos, hit that subscribe button. Remember this one though earlier in the offseason from Jeremy Fowler on what the Raiders could potentially do this offseason? He said, Meanwhile in Vegas, I have talked to a few people around the league who expect coach Josh McDaniels and general manager Dave Ziegler to continue aggressively tweaking the roster. McDaniels is a big on culture fits and will want his own guys. Since they've brought in McDaniels and Ziegler, the one thing that this team continues and continues to do is find good culture fits, at least good culture fits for them. So I know that this team is going to be aggressive just like they were aggressive last offseason. So I do know if a trade happens, whether the Raiders trade for a player or if the Raiders trade a guy away, we're going to be live here on the show. Jeremy Chuggs and I, we're going to be having a hell of a time. I know a lot of the trade videos that we have done in years past, they go viral. They get absolutely insane because we like to celebrate it or we like to discuss it. And if you want to sit down and discuss it with us, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications. Because when trades happen, you need to have the noties on. Let's go to number five here on my list for Raiders trade candidates this offseason. Leading up to free agency, it's number five. It's Malcolm Koontz. And you're going to see a common theme in terms of trade candidates because these are players that were not taken by McDaniels and Ziegler. They were taken by the Mayock-Gruden regime. Selected in the third round of the 2021 NFL Draft last season. He played in 68 snaps, which was only 6%, and then 260 on special teams, so 57. I like Malcolm Koontz, and I have come up on this show before, and I've said, I believe that he is a solid player. You just got to give him a chance. Do I know why that he's not getting as many opportunities? No, I'll be real with you. I don't have the answer to that. But I look at his 2023 cap hit. It's minor. 1.36 million, 13th right now on the Raiders. And if you trade him, you save 866k, you eat 497, but we've seen this Raiders organization before, this front office, if they don't think that you're a good fit and they can move on from you, they're going to try to do it even if it means getting just something. I mean, look at the Trayvon Mullen trade last season. Though that one has worked out in the Raiders' favor, there's going to be situations where if a team was willing to offer a conditional 7th or a 7th round pick for Coons, I do think that this team would go and pull the trigger. In terms of some of the players right now on the Raiders' depth chart, you got Crosby. He's really your only guy. Last season, the Raiders' defense had only 27 sacks. Crosby had 12 and a half of those. Chandler Jones coming off an injury. So some of y'all are probably like, well, Mitch, I think Rochelle, Cleveland Furl, Bauer, they're all free agents. Why would you make this move? You make this move because you're hoping that you can find extra players in free agency and the draft because this season, you got to be able to face the facts. It is a much better defensive class in both of those areas. Now, let's just say you started today's show off like this. You use a little Rex MD. You might end it like that. Head on over to RexMD.com slash chat because they are sponsoring today's show. Fellas, do you sometimes lack confidence in the bedroom? We've all had those nights where we get too nervous or maybe we've had too much to drink. There's nothing worse than not being able to put the stick shift in drive when you need it the most. But have no fear, RexMD is here spreading the cheer even when you've had maybe a little too many beer boots. Uh, RexMD is FDA approved and is the most trusted leader in men's telehealth. 
They have sponsored the Raiders Report to help you always be prepared. Rex MD has made it simple, easy, and cost-effective to help all the men out there last longer and feel more confident in the bedroom. Rex MD makes getting generic and branded Viagra or Cialis easy. Everything's online, even the prescription. And they deliver it discreetly to your door. No waiting rooms, no embarrassing trips to the doctor, no insurance, and no co-pays. Take advantage of the best deal they've ever offered and save up to 90% off and only pay $2 per dosage with our exclusive link. Go to rexmd.com slash chat for this limited time deal. Starter packs of generic Viagra or Cialis are now available for our listeners to get started. That's rexmd.com slash chat for up to 90% off. So Jeremy didn't know this, but I actually took this picture of Jeremy when he was opening up his rexmd for the very first time. He's excited about it, and I know... Uh, I was going to say her name, too, but I won't do that to you. She's excited about it, too. Let's go to some more trade candidates, uh, and we're going to go with Andre James, who last season played center, but I do believe that he has the opportunity to play guard if he were to be dealt to another team. He was a UDFA for the Raiders back in 2019 at a UCLA. Really good friends with Colton Miller, so I'm sure this one would break his heart a little bit. But he was given an extension from the John Gruden, Mike Mayock regime. And last season he played 964 snaps at center. But there's no doubt, when I think about, all right, who are the most likely players to get cut and traded, Andre comes to mind. Because not that he's not a good player, he's a solid player. But at 6.98 million, you can cut some money, you can save a little over $5 million. Last season, according to PFF, 964 snaps, overall grade of 62.8, the pass blocking grade of 64 and a half, and then run blocking at 59.3. Not only was Andre James another guy, I know the Raiders for a fact love Dylan Parham, and Parham last year at the Senior Bowl, one of the reasons why the Raiders loved him so much because he can play center. And I said that I believe long-term Dylan Parham is going to be a better center than James. To me, Parham can play left guard, he can play center, he can play right guard. One of the reasons why that Carmen Rosillo, the Raiders offensive line coach, loved him so much because of that versatility, and he can play almost any single place on the offensive line, probably not left tackle. But if you needed to add an extra center, Parham can do that. So that is definitely something to keep in mind if the Raiders, let's just say, need to save that extra $5 million. So what I want to know from you guys right now is which Raider do you think is the most likely to be traded before free agency? Obviously, my top guys are the ones that I believe are the most likely, though you're not going to like who's on the list. And I know if I would have made this video a week ago, which I wanted to do, everyone would have said Derek Carr. So which Raider is the most likely to be traded before free agency? Wait to see who's on my list at number one. Coming up here next at number three, it's Divine Diablo. As you can see, again, not McDaniels, Ziegler, guys. I don't really know what I think about Diablo. I was hoping he would be able to take a step forward because when he was drafted in the third round in the 2021 NFL draft, I had some high hopes for him. He was a strong safety out of Virginia Tech, showed good athleticism. I liked the fact that he could try to play in different roles. I do think the reason why the Raiders drafted him is because when they drafted Tanner Muse, it didn't work out. They wanted to find Diablo to be that hybrid safety linebacker role. And because of injuries, it has really slowed him up. Missed nine games last season and even dealt with some minor injuries at the tail end of his rookie season. In 2023, the cap hit, it's not very high, only 14 mil. And yeah, you're not going to save a lot of money. But the more and more tape I watch on Diablo, the more I'm starting to wonder, should you just make him a box safety again? Because I don't know what to do with him. He had 74 tackles, a tackle for loss. He has yet to really show me that the versatility that I've been waiting for, that I've been hoping for. What could save Diablo, though, is the Raiders linebacker room is not great. Denzel Perriman, he's a free agent. Jayon Brown, thank the Lord, he's a free agent. The, really, the only guys you got under contract are Luke Masterson, Darian Butler, in terms of who at least seen the field once or twice. It does not give you a lot of confidence whatsoever. So if the Raiders are able to, let's say, add an extra linebacker, maybe they add a, I don't know, a Drew Tranquil, maybe you add somebody like a Levanta David, maybe you add just somebody else, Kaiser White, that then makes somebody like Perriman a little bit more, or Divine Diablo, a little bit more expendable. I will miss him, though, because this was a player that I really thought could be something in the NFL. Let's go to number two. It's Hunter 
Renfro at wide receiver. And Renfro, to me, is going to be linked to a lot of trade rumors because of the report that went out there by Fowler that said teams will be keeping an eye on Renfro. His 2023 cap it is 13.1 mil, fifth highest on the team after he got his contract extension last offseason at two years, 32 million. The thing that's interesting, though, about Renfro is if I was making a video on who are the Raiders potentially traded the entire offseason, Renfro would probably be one because of his post June 1st. So I'll, let's take a second here and look at these numbers. If he were to be traded before June 1st, okay, before free agency, you only save $5.8 million, and the Raiders would end up eating $7.3 million. However, though, if after the year, let's say the Raiders add a wide receiver in the draft, maybe add another guy in free agency, if you trade for Aaron Rodgers, you're probably going to bring in Randall Cobb. That's where the Hunter Renfro trade rumors are going to get going because after June 1st, you can save $11.3 million by moving on from him, and you're only going to eat one8 The number one player that I believe gets traded after June 1st is Hunter Renfro, especially if you get Aaron Rodgers, because I'm telling you, he's going to be bringing in Randall Cobb. He definitely didn't have the year that a lot of us were hoping or really even expecting. And I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. Anytime a wide receiver like Julian Edelman, Wes Welker, Danny Amendola, Hunter Renfro, shit, even me, I could be a receiver in a lot of those old Josh McDaniel systems. White guy with a beard. You're locked and loaded. It did not work out. He had some injuries. Yes, he had some special teams value, but quite frank, I don't want Renfro to be returning punts anymore. You got the best damn receiver in the NFL in Devontae Adams. Matt Collins, he's a free agent, though. I do believe that they end up bringing him back. I know the team likes DJ Turner, and he's a young guy as well. But Hunter Renfro is a very interesting player. But the most important thing in terms of trades that none of the other three guys had, Malcolm Kuntz, Andre James, Divine Diablo, is interest. I don't know if any of those other players are going to get interest. I know for a fact Hunter Renfro, and this guy coming in here at number one will have interest. It's Darren Waller. I have been getting asked a lot recently in terms of, okay, is Waller going to get traded? His jerseys are 50% off at the Raider Image Store at Allegiant Stadium. And that's a hell of a rumor. I'm definitely going to talk about it. I'm talking about it now. But the thing to me that worries me with Waller is the injuries and the does he want to be a Raider. The fact that he was a captain in 2021 and then they took the captain C away from him, that is a little bit concerning to me. 17 starts the past two seasons combined. The injuries are there. And if you trade Waller away, you end up saving 11.4 million and you only eat 660K. There is not going to be an NFL coach out there that says this offense will be more dynamic without Darren Waller. And I know if you can guarantee me a healthy Darren Waller for 17 games, I'm going to keep him. And I would rather not save that $11 million because when he's healthy, he's a top three tight end in the NFL. But we haven't seen that over the past two seasons. And I haven't seen the want for Waller to be out there on the field. He says all the right things, but I need to see it. There is a part of it starting to wonder, is he starting to worry more about after football than currently? Again, though, like I kind of mentioned with the Divine Diablo, one of the things that might save Waller is Foss Moreau. He's a free agent. Horstead, he's a restricted free agent. And I don't want the Raiders to go into the season with your only tight end, Call fathering him. Yeah, there's some other tight ends out there that you could potentially look at. But I do know the Raiders like Waller. If you're given a second round pick for him, though, I believe that this organization would go and take that trade. So in terms of the top two players on this list, it is Darren Waller and it is Hunter Renfro. Here is your time, your opportunity. Let me know down in the comment section and which player is more likely to be traded, but you got to think about what this video is about before free agency. So which one of these two dudes more likely to be traded before March 15th at 4 p.m. Eastern time? If you think it's Waller, type 83. If you think it's Renfro, then type 13. If you made it this far in the vid, all I want you to do real quick is take a screenshot of my top five Raiders trade candidates. You're more than welcome to tag me on Instagram, or you can also tag me on Twitter as well. Share this show with the nation because the more diehard fans we get, the more videos, the more content we can continue to create here on the Raiders Report.